Her. What do you guys have any questions in or out of character for me about the particular module, way things could have done, specific DM styles, interactions, anything? Feel free to throw it at me. That goes for chat too. If anybody has anything to say, feel free to launch questions. I'm here to answer them. Um, well, I just wanted to say that I really loved all the NPCs. I grew so fond of all of them. So that was great. <laughs> I'm glad you dug the NPCs. Uh, I, I really didn't. I didn't want I didn't want to actually hurt the animals because of the fact that they never tried to attack first and yeah. that it was heavily assumed that they were people that were turned into animals and Yeah, they definitely so were. So Yep. I was trying to, you know, the knocking them over, knocking them out and everything. I I was just like, eh, I don't know if I wanna like, you know, murder them because it to me it seemed like they probably were victims in this circumstance but yeah they so may they not have been they weren't but, actual victims yeah. first rylard says dragon's last thought is it slayed by a great banana sword how did she know my allergy how did she know i was allergic <laughs> um back when finky says where's all the rum gone he says why do you make me with identify with a being in game only to have them viciously destroyed to sad music is everything okay at home yeah everything's fine at home uh, I'm pretty sure my girlfriend is actually watching the stream right now. Uh, yeah, no, it was really funny. I forgot to tell you guys that we're actually playing in the stream. This like weird funerary music came up completely, completely by chance while we were botching some rolls to turn people into gibbering. Oh. And like the mouse thing that I was like really being extra with, the music behind it was like, it was like really intense. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that being said, yeah, they were not victims. They were, in fact, all willing participants of the true polymorph. Um, and they were, you know, they were getting compensated, um, by their boss, essentially. Um, but uh. the reason why they were kind of averse to even listening to you is because... Ooh, just bump the table pretty hard. Uh, one reason they were kind of averse to listening to you was primarily because they were like, Hey, if we're animals, how do we get to be not animals again? One, if we like leave the employee of the person that turned us into animals in the first place, so like, which is not what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, let's defeat him and then turn you back. But, uh, but I have a terrible charisma, so I wasn't yeah, gonna really yeah. be able to make a good persuasion roll on that one. So yeah, and also it would have been questionable. It mostly if... served as a distraction. So well, we found that later you guys were able to effectively enough use that wand of true poly polymorph, which is actually an yeah. astounding. But that being yeah. said, uh, it was. <laughs> It's not knowledge that I think they would have had. They, they know him as a great wizard yeah. that turned them into animals, and you're just like somebody with an axe. It's like, I'll turn you back. Promise. Wink. And they're like... No, uh, no, totally fair. Totally I fair. About, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what else we got? Anything else? Um, so all those animals did run away. What happened to them? Oh, well... I imagine they probably went to a rendezvous with Noke, is my guess. And okay. let's talk about maybe Noke took off. He was super bummed that he lost his wand of true polymorph, but it, he was thankful that he escaped with his life. He met up with all of his animal guardsmen, uh, where they immediately started saying, how do we rally? How do we get back? He says, I'm not going anywhere near that. Fenethir Shinebright, my revered uh, master at one point, is now, uh, you know in control of this great wand and he obviously has lackeys who you know handily deflected all of your uh advances and and, and, and attacks so uh i'm not going anywhere near there and they immediately got po'd at him and decided that they were no longer under his care and so that they either i don't know why don't we flip a coin why don't we say that i'm gonna do the last roll for that of the evening somebody call one or two Let's and, do one. Yep. One is going to be they tore him apart oh. bit by bit because they were mad at him and they're still animals. And two is they were more understanding and they went off to um, they went off to seek out a more powerful wizard that could change them back, leaving Noak not dead but destitute. Um, you, and so one is ripping them apart. Oh, okay. So they were understanding. They rolled a solid two. Um... Having rolled a two, they left Noak to his own machinations, and he survives for today. 
Um, and they went off to go find other powerful wizards that might be able to change them back. Who knows? Maybe they'll find Fenethir at one point and decide to grovel and, and see if they, they can get some of that good juju magic. I what like else? that ending. It matches our uh, passive. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I am interested, though, in how things would have been different if they were, like, more violent, like, a group of people who yeah. just, have, like, defended ourselves and killed sure. animals or tried to. Totally. I might have been, I'm sure it would have gone very differently. Yeah, so it's kind of assumed Partially. that this is like, like D&D is like a, it's like half strategic, like tactical combat sim. So like, mm -hmm. it's assumed that you were just going to say screw it and get tired of the half orc and start whacking them. But I love that you guys kind of like emotionally bonded with him because that made it way more interesting. It was assumed that he was going to not give you an option and say, uh, forget it, I'm taking the sheep then and like attack you. But you guys were doing such a good job of like coming up with weird narrative stuff that would keep him mm -hmm. engaged that I was like, I can't, I just can't. So you were supposed to kill him or chase him down, basically, getting the sheep. Um, he was going to give that exposition about how he was changed into a sheep way earlier. And then you guys were basically going to be doing like a standard incursion, little dungeon-y crawl type thing to get into these platforms, meet up with Noak. And then Noak was basically supposed to run from you using Expeditious Retreat. Uh, and once he ran from you, he was going to go into his bed and look at the largest and scariest thing that he found, which was his bed or his bedroom and, and see his bed and true polymorph it himself into the bed dragon. Now that was just too like off the wall, insane thing to not include. So I decided to just for flavor, kind of throw it in at the end with the ricocheting true polymorph thing, because you rolled a critical. That, critical that worked check. really well. Yeah. A critical check on your, your sleight of hand to steal it from him, which was like totally not, to be an intended thing like i shouldn't have just put it on his waist so then i had to make up ground and be like oh okay you grabbed it but it like went off and like this that the other thing so that was i mean this went really <laughs> really off the rails you guys actually made things harder for yourself too because in that first garden tier there was only supposed to be the apes and a bear the other uh -oh. like wolves and the bear and like the uh, like all this other stuff like guzz like weren't even supposed to be part of that you're basically supposed to have like clipped him already like they were out of the picture but you made that whole process like I had to see to my pants that whole situation with him going to check with Noak and talk with him and then like yeah that was a tough one that was fun though I, but I, I liked it though like I, I like doing things not the uh, same old standard way I like to try to find weird ways yeah. of working around things yeah it took a it's lot more to... creative and more fun I feel like it took a lot to egg you guys into like actually physically attacking a monster <laughs> it's like it's a lot of work well well the monster yes it, i was fine with attacking it's more like yeah yeah the people that were turned into animals was kind of like no I, under I understand that if yeah, they yeah. if they were more aggressive and like had come at me i probably would have yeah 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 attacked that more that makes but, sense yeah in in retrospect, if I wanted to keep things on the rails, which honestly I think would probably have been less fun, if I wanted to keep things like really on the rails, I would have just had the bear and Guz attack you right off the bat and have him be a much bigger jerk instead of just like a kind of a lovable dope. Um, so, yeah. What else we got? Anything from chat specifically? Other than why isn't the big room rug, rug straight who organized this junk? I don't know, man. He's a wizard. He's got other stuff on his mind. You know what I mean? Tidiness probably isn't the top of mind for him. So, um, yeah. Any other any other questions right off the rip? I don't think so. Other than uh, uh... just a. Go ahead. Oh, just a comment on because um, I play one shots. I like to sometimes try out new things that I wouldn't normally do. So I tried out a fighter, mm -hmm. and like there's some things I like about it, and it's a. Uh, some things maybe not as much like because i i'm used to kind of being like the face or like the person that tries to talk their way out of things and this the fighter really didn't have any charisma or anything so it was kind of like uh it was just different but i do like the superiority dice thing i thought that was kind of an interesting concept and like picking which ones you think will work and i mean you'll never know because you never know what the adventure is going to be so i kind of just picked a couple and they ended up working okay. Yeah. But 
Yeah. Some other ones might have worked better, but like you just never know. So yeah, I think I don't know if I would do another fighter. I I like I think I like playing the rogue better, but yeah, fighters definitely became because a lot of the things that they did. Actually, yeah, Mint says Battlemaster is but best fighter, and honestly, I kind of agree. They did a lot of things with fighters. So essentially, one thing that Five E did was consolidate down a lot of the uh, like customization that they did in Three Point Five. So I always use Swashbuckler as the example because it took like multi-classing, this, that, and the other thing, like a lot of theory crafting, a lot of like hacking your character, min-maxing, just to be able to be like a proficient Swashbuckler in previous versions. And then eventually, in like Five E, you essentially get all those boiled down into like standard class paths that just kind of like happen. Um, naturally mm-hmm. and like there's a lot more like breadth to the standard branches of classes um so yeah. fighter because of that as a byproduct has become a ton more interesting like a ton more interesting um in that there's several really cool paths that they can go to go down and they become a lot more viable than something like 3.5 where honestly they were super super boring and like super useless they were just kind of like mm-hmm. bad barbarians basically in 3.5 i feel like um, a lot of people might disagree with me, but that's just my feeling on it. We never played with them. They were always like the training, the training class you would give people. Um, no, your be... fighter seemed really self-sufficient, which helped out a lot in this situation. Yeah, you uh, you came in with some clutch maneuvers, um, some super clutch maneuvers. Like that second wind is really good. That one d one d ten plus your level. Yeah, uh, the rally. I think I used all the things at just the right time that I had to use them. So yeah. I felt good about, Yeah. like I didn't like blow all of them at once. Like I kind of was strategic on when I sure. used them because you only get the four, so. Yeah, and I, one thing I was slightly concerned about was that this is obviously like most adventures intended for a party of four, you know what I mean? So this is probably intended for a party of four level threes or party of four level four or something like that. And I was like, nah, forget it. You know what I mean? You guys are both adept at this kind of stuff and we can make it work and make you level five and like allow you to get through it and like do you feel like it went through all right with two players like that do you, do you feel overwhelmed at any yeah. time no i think we uh balanced each other out pretty well because she had like the magic stuff and i had yeah. more of the combat stuff so it yeah. i and like turning into the sheep was like a really nice little plot twist there oh, so that, that worked hilarious. out really nicely that was hilarious yeah. oh my god that killed me yeah and one thing i will commend you guys on it was a lot of fun i appreciate in in pcs from a dm perspective is you keep my job and my life interesting because you don't always it's not always just kill whatever you can kill like the whole murder hobo route is fun for like five minutes and you're like okay cool this is every game i've ever played but the fact that you were willing to expend action economy when it went to like turn based and you were like hey i'm gonna go up i'm gonna read these scrolls or like i'm gonna jump over this thing and see if i can communicate or i'm gonna like try and gather some information or do something off just or like attacking. yeah distract them instead of yeah, yeah. i mean that that a hundred percent made the game that made it a lot more interesting from all all perspectives i think um so yeah com- commendations on that kudos to everybody that uh that played today um what else any other questions about the one shot or anything else cm stuff well, I was just going to say, too, like, if we were talking about classes, this was the first time that I had tried a druid, sure. and I enjoyed it a lot. I don't know if it was oh, just yeah. the circumstances that made it work or what, but it's definitely something I'd want to try again. Oh, druids are great. My buddy played a druid in my Storm King's Thunder campaign yeah. that tortured me with Thorn Whip. Um, oh, my God, that thing. So you can whip people with it dealing damage, then also tug them 10 feet toward you. So he'd gone up on um oh gosh what are those things called um basically we'll just say the castle walls on the top of the castle walls right where soldiers usually hang out and plink out arrows and stuff like that he would grab them uh from there and drag them into like the moat and like drag them across things that would deal damage to them and like he just it was like a cantrip that he could cast like every single whenever he felt like and he was just it was horrible it was horrible gus greenbaum yeah great great use of that but one thing that i really love about druid that you kind of got to touch on that when you turn into a sheep is that you can turn into anything that you've seen you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so if you're in chult right and you're like off there doing like uh uh not tomb of annihilation but the other one the, the new one that came out um yeah it's like 
you could be a dinosaur. You could be a Velociraptor or, or a Tyrannosaurus Rex or a Triceratops or something. Like, uh huh. How cool is that? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. As long as it's you know challenge rating is lower than your level. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say there's some yeah. limits based on your level, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the Druid kit is really fun though. I was, you know what? That's one thing that I was unexpected for me. I would assume because it was a wooden monster that y'all would have tried to like bust it up with fire beforehand. And I think that that was one of the intended paths of the module, which again just proves that people will never stick to the actual module. <laughs> mm -hmm. I I feel like I like to try to do things differently than what yeah. seems like the normal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, that makes sense. Um, yeah. No, I thought I had a lot of fun though. So thank you guys very much again for playing. Um, unless chat has anything, unless you all have any other questions or comments or anything like that, I will just say again for anybody in the room definitely don't forget to check out oblique's twitch which there's a link to in the title of this thank you savvy thank you oblique i can't uh can't thank you enough this was a lot of fun tonight hopefully thank you yeah get this going again next wednesday with whomever we'll probably cycle some players um you'll definitely be seeing more of me and you'll likely be seeing more of oblique and more savvy uh mm -hmm. <laughs> djen says i have so many questions but we can unpack those later <laughs> yeah you're gonna need to unpack those by yourself <laughs> in bed at night with your eyes closed head on a pillow for a while get them get them going and then and then field them to me um thank you rylard i appreciate it. good job man i appreciate the good job it's always nice to hear as a dm um i had a lot of fun i thought this was great and yeah i mean i hope everybody has an absolutely fantastic rest of the evening for all those watching uh thanks for staying around this long uh Thanks for checking out the stream. Definitely check out the YouTube and the Twitter and uh, come back. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Not always 100% of that time. Um, of the time does it stay on that schedule, but I, I try my darndest. I'm going to be doing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3 coming up, so um, be sure to check that out. Um, and also, anything that comes from stream is going to be going up on YouTube as well as other unique YouTube content. So, yeah. Let's uh let's cash it out on that positive note. Thank you guys again so much for everything and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your night. Thank you. Bye. Thanks guys. You too. Thanks. Thank you for having us. No problem. Thank you. Bye.